Rick and Morty is coming back, baby. You know what? This one counts as one of your adventures. While most of the highly anticipated season is shrouded in mystery, it's clear that it will feature plenty of sci-fi hijinks. As we look forward to the next season, let's appreciate the many gadgets, like the mind-boggling Mr. Meeseeks box, that gave the series its charm. Today, the binger is getting swifty and ranking the top 10 inventions in Rick and Morty. Let's Rick and Roll. Put a shirt on your dumb dad, and let's get this dumb universe rolling. Rick and Morty has come a long way over the course of three seasons. What started as a grounded, if offbeat, science fiction cartoon transformed into a means to critique society and the people in it. So even if it's pretty mundane by the standard of later seasons, we still have to give some props to Rick's Freeze Ray. Appearing in the first episode of the series, the Freeze Ray was the viewer's first taste of the show's iconic dark humor. When Morty is harassed by a troubled bully named Frank, Rick freezes Frank solid and then drags Morty on another adventure. Seeing Frank in the hallway and not realizing that he's frozen, Summer approaches only for Frank to fall over and shatter. The Freeze Ray establishes Rick and Morty's reckless abandon for human life and how the show revels in breaking taboos. Basically, it plays a big part in setting the tone for the show and giving the viewer an idea of what's to come. That being said, the Freeze Ray is pretty basic. This invention is found in the majority of sci-fi series and is practically a staple of the genre. That's alright though, since the rest of these inventions get super weird very quickly. Rick and Morty doesn't get mystical or supernatural all that often, but when it does, the show goes hard on that material. Case in point, the ninth episode of season one, Something Ricked This Way. Here, the literal devil sets up an antique shop and starts selling cursed items to the community. Rick, of course, takes great offense at someone trying to mess with him and creates a device that removes the curses from the magical items. The invention only adds fuel to the raging inferno that is Rick's ego. If he can outwit and belittle the actual devil, then he's pretty much a god, albeit a super messed up one. Rick's scientific prowess is so incredible that he combats supernatural forces so easily that it's boring to him, and he quickly destroys it. I just got bored. Everybody out. Rick's self-destructive nature is a recurring theme in the series, and this invention really highlights that part of his character. It may not appear again on the show, but it brings one of Rick and Morty's biggest themes into the forefront of an episode, and that makes it pretty amazing. Also, if Rick messed with the devil, that means he's probably going to give God the business eventually, right? Cause that would be awesome. Some of the best episodes of Rick and Morty center on Rick's interdimensional cable invention. This device allows the Smith family to view TV shows from different, and usually bizarre, universes. The end result is that the episodes turn into a series of ridiculous shorts that feel like they were written and recorded on the fly. That description might sound harsh, but these episodes gave us now iconic gags like real fake doors, man versus car, and two brothers. Even with Morty's mind blowers replacing interdimensional cable in season three, this invention is a big part of the show's success. It proves that Rick and Morty can take even the strangest ideas and make them entertaining. This idea also highlights the show's refreshing, improvised tone. The interdimensional cable invention doesn't really impact the events of the show outside of the episodes where it appears. However, it is a central part of some of the best episodes in the entire series. That more than earns it a spot on this list and in our hearts, which hopefully won't be cut out in a serial commercial. Does anyone remember the days before Pickle Rick was the biggest meme to come out of Rick and Morty? Well, those of us who recall the long past year of 2015 will remember the iconic Tiny Rick. This teenage version of Rick came to be so that he could infiltrate Morty and Summer's school and help them hunt vampires. Oh yeah, vampires exist in the Rick and Morty universe. You'd think that'd be a bigger deal in the show, but uh, nope. Anyway, shortly after the gang stakes coach Feratu, Rick refuses to leave his teenage body. Through Summer's intervention and the music of the great late Elliot Smith, Rick returns to his aged body. It turns out that Tiny Rick was actually a part of Operation Phoenix, or a series of clones of various ages that Rick can inhabit. This could functionally grant Rick immortality, but would rob him of major parts of his identity. All in all, Rick's younger clones offer a fun thought experiment and argues that age deeply affects a person's worldview. Also, it was really fun to yell out Tiny Rick at parties until Pickle Rick drained the well dry. Speaking of which... 
If you haven't heard of Pickle Rick by now, you're probably living under a rock. I'm Pickle Rick! The character has been memed to death at this point and has enough merchandise that you'd think Rick is always a pickle. Is Rick turning himself into a pickle a great invention? Not really, but the suit he builds out of dead rats? That one is. While trapped in his pickle body, Rick builds a suit out of rat corpses so that he can retrieve the serum that will make him human again. Without limbs, he builds this intricate device that's able to take out an entire Eastern European hit squad. And, of course, he goes to this extreme just to avoid putting the slimmest amount of work into taking care of his mental health. Pickle Rick and his rat suit are such a great invention because they cut to the core of Rick's character. He's so unable to address his problems and bad habits that he'd rather put himself in mortal peril as a vegetable than go to therapy. It's a great metaphor, but its overuse as a meme drops it down to the number six spot. You could write an entire thesis paper on the ethical and psychological implications of Mr. Meeseeks. These creatures come into being as fully formed adults, live to fill a single purpose, and then gleefully perish. That kind of existence raises a lot of questions, but it's undeniable that the Meeseeks box is a great invention. Meeseeks can easily accomplish any task that isn't tied to Jerry's self-esteem. Even if they get a little barbaric if they exist for too long, you could accomplish anything with the help of a Meeseeks box. Not to mention that Mr. Meeseeks iconic catchphrase is a lot of fun. I'm Mr. Meeseeks, look at me! While the Meeseeks box hasn't appeared since season one, and for good reason, it seems like we'll see more of the blue dude in season four. Hopefully we get more of an insight into the simple and strange life of this genie-like creature. Or, at the very least, we find out why existence is so painful for them. I can't take it anymore! I just wanna die! We all wanna die! We're Meeseeks! That seems like a pretty big design flaw if there isn't a solid reason backing it up. One of Rick's greatest, and yet most underappreciated inventions is the Time Freezer. Appearing at the end of Season 1 and beginning of Season 2, this device stops time, which is probably as close to actual time travel as the show will ever get. Rick uses this device to stop Jerry and Beth from discovering how he, Morty, and Summer trashed the house while they were away. Once they realize that they have an unlimited amount of time to clean up their mess, they instead goof off for a few months. Although this does lead to them becoming unstable in their own timeline and nearly disappearing placing themselves in reality. These dramatic consequences are probably what keeps the Time Freezer from appearing in the show again. Or maybe Rick just doesn't want to hurt Slow Mobius's feelings too badly. Either way, halting the progression of time for months on end is a pretty incredible feat and makes the Time Freezer an awesome invention. Using it definitely isn't worth the risk of ending up in time prison though. One of Rick's greatest and most ethically questionable inventions is the Microverse Battery. This device contains a universe that houses a planet with advanced life that Rick tricked into producing electricity for him. What does he do with this near limitless source of energy? He uses it to power his car. Well, technically it's a spaceship, but either way, it's still made out of garbage. In using his microverse battery, Rick is manipulating an entire planet's worth of people into free manual labor. It's easy to see why this would upset Morty and Rick's microverse equivalent, Zeep, who's voiced by Stephen Colbert. Then again, Zeep's planet wouldn't exist at all without Rick's need for electricity, so it's a bit of a gray area. Ignoring all the moral stuff, the Microverse battery is a pretty incredible invention. It's also a fun spin on some classic sci-fi tropes and feeds into Rick's inflated ego and god complex. The Miniverse battery might be a better name for it though. Then again, the Teenyverse has a pretty good ring to it too. Of course, Rick's spaceship is a far more impressive invention than the battery that powers it. Made of trash that he found in the Smith household's garage, this ship is one of the most feared vessels in the universe. Well, at least when it's not weighed down by a pile of empty beer bottles and a probably busted neutrino bomb. While operating at its full capacity, Rick's ship can take on an entire fleet of enemy ships and outrun just about anything in the galaxy. Even with a dead battery, the ship's AI can fight off an entire army, commit psychological warfare, and negotiate peace to a centuries-long conflict. Sure, it might have ruined ice cream on a parallel Earth, but that's still a pretty good win-loss ratio. Furthermore, you don't even need a Rick-level intellect to drive the ship. Morty has a pretty good handle on it by the end of Season 3, which means we might see him go on an intergalactic joyride sometime in Season 4. That could be pretty fun, and we might just see what else Rick's cobbled-together spaceship is capable of. 
let's be real, you knew that the portal gun was coming in as the swiftiest invention in all of Rick and Morty. The portal gun is the backbone of most of Rick and Morty's adventures and the reason so many organizations are after Rick to begin with. The portal gun gives Rick the power to basically travel anywhere in the universe, which kind of makes him a bit of a living god. As we've seen in the show, Rick can use his portal gun to escape the consequences of pretty much any situation. He uses it to travel to a new universe after he accidentally turns everyone on Earth into Cronenberg monsters. Then he and Morty use it to peace out after Morty unintentionally pisses off squirrels. Seriously, don't mess with squirrels. Not only is the portal gun and its effects a central part of Rick's character, it's the main plot device of the show. Nearly every episode of the series revolves around characters using this invention. The program could literally not even exist without the portal gun, and that's what makes it the swiftiest of Rick's inventions. Fingers crossed that we see the actual origin for this device in season four, and not just a giant fake out inside of a Shoney's. What do you think of our ranking of Rick's inventions? Did we miss anything major? Please let us know in the comment section down below. While you're down there, also be sure to click the like button, subscribe to the binger, and ring the bell. We have plenty more videos on Rick and Morty coming soon, and you're not gonna wanna miss a single one.